Hey, whatever happened to that guy that did that thing on the internet years ago? I ask myself this question all the time. Tickets to internet infamy are given out every day. But what happens after their 15 minutes of fame has run out? Well, today we take a look into the lives of five internet celebrities and what they did after they got famous. Meet Ted Williams, the homeless man with the golden voice. After attending school for voice acting, he fell into the hard life of drugs, alcohol, and jail time. Living on the streets for 17 years, Ted would stand on the corner and hold up a sign stating that he had the God-given gift of voice. Back in 2011, he gained widespread attention after a videographer posted a video of him on YouTube that went viral almost instantly. When you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9. Oh, baby, what a voice. Once media outlets got a hold of the story, the job offer started rolling in. He started to do voiceover work for the Cleveland Cavaliers, MSNBC, and Kraft Foods, just to name a few. And with his $350,000 book deal, he now had enough money to buy a car, a condo, and a new set of chompers. <laughs> Literally, this dude went from homeless to Hollywood. But everything isn't all roses and kittens for Mr. Williams. Unfortunately, money squandering and a few unethical managers can ruin a good thing. Ted lost his house, his car, and pretty much all of his money. In his own words, he says, he owns nothing. He was able to keep a job at his local Ohio radio station, but his boss has to drive him to work every day. From rags to riches, back to rags. But on the bright side, Ted got married in 2014. He also devotes some of his time to homeless shelters through his own nonprofit organization. Good luck, buddy. Antoine Dodson, the man that became famous because of a home break-in in Huntsville, Alabama. Antoine and his sister were interviewed by a local news station about an attempted rape by some idiot in the projects. In the interview, Dodson flamboyantly sent warnings for everyone to hide their loved ones because they were, quote, raping everybody out here. Had your kids, had your wife, and had your husband because they're raping everybody out here. When a group of YouTube musicians saw the story, they digitally remixed the on-air tirade and produced a song entitled The Bed Intruder. The video currently has millions of hits on YouTube, and the song itself is certified platinum selling over 1 million copies in 2010. All of a sudden, Antoine was everywhere, from being on George Lopez to Tosh.0. With the profits from the song, the on-air appearances, and merchandising, he made enough money to move his family to a much safer neighborhood. Well, nowadays, Antoine is a Hebrew Israelite and says he's no longer a homosexual. Wait, he was gay? <laughs> I had no idea. Before I even came out and said, look, I'm gay to stay in the other, I was dating women, you know what I'm saying? Of a woman, I always liked that. And I guess it got to the point so much that I tried to like actually be that instead of being with that, I was trying to be that. And I was like, you know what? It's foolishness. Nonetheless, he claims that he's not into that lifestyle anymore, calling it foolishness. After a bit of soul searching, he said that he wanted to have a wife and start a family. Uh, dating women, you know, marry a woman, you know, have some kids, you know, that's what I want, you know what I'm saying? Well, he did just that. He got married, yes, to a woman, and they welcomed a baby boy in 2014. After becoming a father, a husband, and a devout Hebrew, Antoine decided that it would be a great idea to perform in Twerk City, uncut. That's right, baby. Shake that booty for the Lord. Ah, yes, we all remember where we were when the Star Wars Kid video caressed our eyeballs. This young man's attempt at swinging around a golf ball retriever, <coughs> I mean a dual-bladed lightsaber, was magical to say the least. Gislan Raza was a member of the school's television club and was practicing choreography for an upcoming Star Wars parody. The 14-year-old boy decided to record it because hey, who wouldn't, right? Well, in his haste, he forgot to grab the tape, mm. leaving it behind on a shelf. His Jedi-influenced moves were made public when a schoolmate converted the video and uploaded the footage to the peer-to-peer -peer network Kazaa. Soon after, it spread like wildfire. Uh, imagine your parents showing embarrassing toddler photos to one-seventh of the world's population. 
yeah, not good. His video garnered a plethora of spoofs, from Arrested Development to Family Guy to South Park. <laughs> Well, honestly, who hasn't been parodied on South Park? But alas, his life became a living nightmare. Once the video made its rounds, the kids at his school would stand on tables around him just to get a chance at teasing him. I mean, they teased him right out of school. Like, literally, he had to leave school to attend private tutoring. And when he got home to check his computer, oh boy, he's probably the biggest victim of cyberbullying ever. In 2003, his father filed a quarter million dollar lawsuit against the families of the boys who uploaded the video. It was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. After years of therapy to overcome his own feelings of worthlessness, Raza now attends law school in Canada and is currently the president of the Conservation Society in his hometown. The force is strong in this one. Takes driving test, gets first DUI. When these words were plopped on top of a totally geek-tastic photo in 2012, Bad Luck Brian was born. But who was the boy behind the goofy yearbook photo? Turns out it's a guy named Kyle Craven, and he's totally not a dork. In school, Kyle was known as the class clown. He would butcher renditions of Hanson's Umbop at talent shows. He rode a unicycle at pep rallies, and he unwrapped packets of butter and threw them at the ceiling tiles in the cafeteria. And yearbook picture days were no exception to the rule. He put on the ugliest red plaid sweater he could find. He stuck out his lower jaw as far as possible and even reddened his own face right before shooting this infamously awkward photo. Years later, his friend called him up and explained that he uploaded his joke pic to the entertainment and social network site, Reddit. He was now internet famous. <laughs> I mean, it looks like someone squirted lemon juice in his guy's eyes and he's fighting through the pain just to take the photo. Genius. Everyone wanted a piece of this phenomenon. Retailers like Walmart and Hot Topic signed merchandising deals with Craven to sell his likeness on t-shirts. Over a three-year span, Kyle made around $20,000 just for looking like a total spaz. Today, Kyle has totally embraced his royal meanness and even turned it into a short-lived YouTube series. But his main gig is being a project manager building churches for his pop's construction company. Hey, here's hoping that his professional life isn't plagued with a variety of embarrassing and tragic occurrences. Builds a church, excommunicated. Hey, remember when Britney Spears was still relevant uh, around 2007, 2008? You know, when she shaved her head and went on a paparazzi killing spree? Oh yeah, and who could forget that fairy tale marriage with Kevin Federline? <laughs> Uh, to say the least, Britney Spears was going through some tumultuous times, but here comes Chris Crocker to the rescue. Tired of all the negative media criticisms, Chris recorded an extremely emotional rant. He cries, then he berates the media, then he cries a little bit more, then he defends Britney's honor with these three famous words. Leave Britney alone! This melodramatic lady man wailed out the phrase for the entire world to hear, and it was a massive viral hit. The video climbed to 4 million views in just two days. He became an immediate YouTube sensation, and the media frenzy ensued. He was interviewed by Howard Stern, Jimmy Kimmel, and Ryan Seacrest, just to name a few. His video was parodied by the film Meet the Spartans, Seth Green for his robot chicken show, and, and wow, South Park again. Really? Really, guys? Well, what's been going on with this guy since? Porn. Yep, in 2011, he did some gay porn with his ex-boyfriend. Ironically, they broke up one week before shooting, but the contract said they had to do it, so they did. And hey, just in case you were wondering, the title of the porn is called Chris Crocker's Raw Love. <laughs> uh, not that I've seen it or anything, but you know, if you're into that sort of thing, I was just, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> 